47. Thank you guys for making it this far. All right, and the reason we do this podcast is because there are a lot of stressed out entrepreneurs in this city, and we have this moment to kind of step back and see how the community is growing as a whole so we don't get lost in the mundaneness of what's happening in our everyday lives. And we cover the news, events, and people that make this community the special community that it is. Now, the reason we get amazing volunteers like Susan, Pavel, Sean, and Jackie to come out every single episode and help us is because we believe the transformation of downtown Las Vegas is not the kind of thing you can give to an architect as a blueprint. It's the kind of thing that you have to feel, that you have to know your neighbor, and you have to see them in situations where there's nothing for them to gain. They just want to help you. And that's why this is kind of a moment to capture that. And we do have a camera that is always looking at the audience. So our goal is to actually get a good good face shot of every single person in the audience at some point tonight. So please be aware of that, because we're trying to document all the people that were here behind the transformation of downtown Vegas. And then to make sure that you look real drunk in that picture is our yeah. sponsor Cheers. right here. That's, we that's have, good. <laughs> to get to, yeah, I impress myself with the segue sometimes. I don't even know. But we have uh, we have Kathy Wilson. She runs Cheers. Rachel's Kitchen here in the Ogden. Yeah, there's for sure. And she paid for all the great beers. You went out. In, Woo, you went, yeah, you went above the PBR quota. Oh, I love yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good stuff. But uh, yeah, so let's start. We, we if you if you want to go to the Downtown Podcast Instagram, we just put up a video that you were having from just this afternoon where you had a 12 year old in there playing music. So what's going on with your yeah. music nights? Yeah. Thanks for asking. So we have what we call our Rachel's Kitchen Kitchen Jam every Thursday night from four to seven. Uh, started out with acoustical guitar. It's evolved into an open mic and people coming in bringing their own instruments. Uh, tonight we had a 12-year-old playing with a 42-year-old. So it was yeah. really pretty amazing. Do you have a Belusa yet? Is that, is that what they're called? I think the thing Pablo was doing, that burr. Uh, we'll no, get not, that in there, Not you know? good, but maybe we should okay. start that. We've got Joey on later, too. He's good. We'll, we'll find you a good artist. Okay, thanks. Okay, so you're actually here in the Ogden, the exact building we're in. The bottom layer has got some um, place where there's restaurants and things like that. And that's where you guys Correct. are right here for us. And then you have a fundraiser going on Saturday, which seems like a very important thing to talk about. Yeah, so. we do. Thank you. Uh, in memory of the uh, tragedy that happened a year ago on the, actually this uh, s uh, Saturday, December 14th, uh, the Sandy Hook uh, tragedy that took place, we are uh, in conjunction with the cast of the Pawn Stars having a fundraiser from 10 to 2 to um, generate income for what they call uh, Where Angels Play Foundation, which is where they are building parks in honor of each of the 26 victims. So from 10 to 2, we'll be having a really nice fundraiser at the restaurant. Okay, so tell me what that's going to be like. So if I come down there Saturday, you're going to have the Cast of the Pawn Stars just there eating, or are they going to be they're mingling gonna, with people? They're going to be mingling. Gonna... There's going to be three of them. Uh, they're going to be there throughout unannounced times. Their schedules are really busy. They're actually in filming right now, but they'll be in for each from a, for a half-hour segment. We'll be raffling off and auctioning off some of their audience autographed memorabilia. All those proceeds will go 100% to the foundation, and then we're going to donate a percentage of the proceeds from the entire awesome. day sales to the foundation also. All right. Give a round of applause for that. I appreciate you doing that. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So, everybody just go down. It's right here in the Ogden. Yes, um, play with come us. check them out Saturday, and thank you very much for paying thank for the beer tonight. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Yeah. First off, welcome. For first off, I want to welcome back Pavel and Susan. You know they were gone last week because you were playing with robots at we Robots were. Comp. <laughs> so I'm glad you made it out alive because we know how deadly they can all be. <laughs> we didn't get overtaken by the robot army, but we tried. But right. it's but good to be back. It's very yeah, good. Yeah, it's be good back. to have your accent back. So tell me um, what's going on. <laughs> well, let's get these, let's get these events kickstarted. Oh, it's funny that you do say we're getting them kickstarted because we have Joey, Joey Piro here and. Uh, he is quite an amazing dude. Let me let me give him a proper introduction. He's a Juilliard and New England Conservatory of Music trained trumpet player, and he has trained under trumpet legends such as Wynton Marsalis, which is super impressive. And uh, you are actually based in Vegas, which we're always excited to hear. Yes. And uh, you have a bit of a dream, and this has something to do with the Kickstarter. So why don't you tell us more about yourself? Well, I've been here for three years uh, in Vegas before the big boom, as we call it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've seen the community grow at an incredible rate. And one of my dreams is
is to get this next record rocking and rolling right here in Las Vegas with some great talent that I've met here, some people that I've actually moved here from uh, other wow. parts of the country to, to be involved in the community and in my band. Awesome. And the goal really is to raise money because... Well, let's face it, none of us have any money right now. <laughs> but uh, the goal is to raise money in order to make this album a reality. And uh, we want to use as many Vegas resources as possible to make this happen. That sounds really awesome. Like, I'm definitely going to kickstart this one. Sounds yeah, really you guys cool. have. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, your, your spiel at the beginning about how it, it's about organic and you can't buy it and you can't give someone a blueprint. I mean, that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to make music because music can unite people. I mean, we just lost Nelson Mandela, mm -hmm. who was the first politician to actually unite a country with music. He had a, uh, a brilliant trumpet player who was in his corner named Hugh... Uh, Ma Masakella, I believe is how you pronounce it, and he was befriending him while in prison and after, and they would write music about releasing him and about freedom. And so this is something that speaks to communities. It speaks to large volumes of people. So, uh, uh, you know, we want to do that at a small level here, of course, but um, uh, still just as intent and with direction and substance. That's really touching. Yeah, That's oh, awesome. thank you. So you have like a Facebook page and all sorts yeah, of stuff you can, that people can find you at, we're, right? We're easy to find. Uh, Facebook, you can search my fan page. It's Joey Piro Music. So it's Facebook slash Joey Piro Music. And uh, also the Kickstarter, you can just simply search Joey Piro on the Kickstarter, get involved. We got incredible incentives to get involved. Uh, one which includes my... Uh, yeah, I did the, I did the $25 company. tier, so what do I get? Okay. I get an album, right? Uh, you, you, yeah, well, well, you'll get that album, and you also get the new one when it comes out. Okay, oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah, so we hope to reach our goal. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. No, Vegas has been, been great, man, and I, I just wanted to say, man, I've been to many of these podcasts, and I, I really appreciate what you guys, and it doesn't go unnoticed, and we all love you here, so yeah. thank you. Thank you That's so great. much, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank My pleasure. You. All right, Absolutely. well, we should throw the conversation over to Karen, who's been throwing a lot of events down here. In fact, you yeah. worked with uh, Tech Cocktail. Yeah. So you did it, yeah, I know you helped those guys with Celebrate, which was unbelievably yeah, fun. You. We met thank a lot you. of the people through there, but that's not, that's just the beginning of it. So you have a lot of events coming up through CES, it's I hear? It's just so. the beginning, exactly. Yes. <laughs> uh, we have officially been signed on for Downtown Project to Ooh. produce a week worth of events during CES in our lovely backyard downtown Las nice. Vegas. So as we all know, CES brings 135,000 people from all over the world into Vegas. We want to get them downtown. Um, we feel like there are entrepreneurs and startups and they're really geeky, geeky tech folks that are down there. Those are our people, we're their people. Let's get them down here and do some fun stuff. So we have stuff going on Monday, January 6th through Thursday, January 9th, including Wednesday night a get your geek on party at the container park. Oh, so, there we go. Yeah, uh, with some high class DJ talent coming in. I can't say just yet, but um, some like fun surprises. stuff. And then yeah. Thursday evening, the plan is we're closing down Fremont Street. Oh, we're gonna have a block that. party. Gonna be so uh, we're doing the the official week of events is called Passport to Downtown. So you can go to Passport to number two Passport to <laughs> Downtown dot com, and it has all of the events that are going on. Uh, participants will get a passport to go through our favorite bar and vendor locations nice. to get a taste mm -hmm. of downtown. That's so fun. It'll That's be really cool. Fun. Yeah. Cool. So, so you're blocking off Fremont East, so people can just kind of wander in and out of Fremont all the bars. Fremont East and from Las yeah. Vegas to 8th, so Eight. all the way down to oh, Learning oh, Village. Down. Yeah. yeah. Wow. We've got Great. some fire things coming in to keep us warm. It's like a mini life is beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. It, it totally will be. So we hope to see everybody down there. Okay. Yeah. Fabulous. All right. Well, we'll definitely check that out. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. What was it? Get your geek on. Get your geek <laughs> get your on. Geek. <laughs> I have a geeky news event to talk about before we close this out. Um, it's Vegas Tech. They're putting on another hackathon, and this one's going to be in Palm Springs. So the the fashion hackathon was like awesome last time. It was super fun. So there's going to be another one coming up, and it's actually called Codathon, and it's got more of a skew on health and fitness and de-stressing and things like that, which I think is cool because usually a hackathon is incredibly stressful, right? So you don't need to, <laughs> I don't know, like, if, out, if yeah. anyone saw my face at the last hackathon, like you knew not to talk to me. We did see your face, your earphones were on, like, and it was down. 
<laughs> so I'm, I'm hoping, yeah. I'm, I've actually registered to attend this Codathon, um, so I'm hoping that I'll be less stressed. And the reason for that is it's actually being held in conjunction with the City of Palm Springs and Palm Springs Resorts, which sounds very relaxing to me. Um, Vegas Tech are inviting Vegas developers and designers um, to get on down to a hackathon that's hosted by Ace Hotel, Tumblr of all websites, I'm a huge fan of Tumblr, um, and the Clinton Foundation's Health Matters Initiative and Jawbone. Has anyone got a Jawbone up or a jaw? We've got a Jawbone big box in the back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're it's actually sponsoring yeah. it too. Yeah. And I hear that they might be handing some of the um, the bracelets out, the fitness bracelets out, as part of this hackathon, which is really, awesome. really cool. So that's actually going to be on the 10th of January. It starts at noon on Friday and it goes through the whole weekend. They have really awesome prizes, including mentoring initiatives and all sorts of stuff like that. And the difference here is they really do mean health and de-stress. So not only will you be doing hackathon projects based on health and fitness, but they make you take mandatory breaks. You get to do oh, yoga really? and stretching and like all of this really cool stuff. So I think it's a really cool idea. Yeah. Well, so, and you know, so many people come to the podcast asking how do they get involved? This is a perfect opportunity to come down and actually team up with somebody and see if you can exactly. build something. Exactly. So if you've got an idea, if you're a developer, a designer, a business person, or you just got some cool ideas, definitely come down to this. You can register on code Codathon.splashthat.com, and um, they've already held this Codathon in New York, and it went really well. So um, let's make the Vegas chapter of this awesome. Okay, awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you guys for coming out. Thank really you. appreciate it. So yeah, so we got a, theme, a lot of cool themed events this week. So. We do, and I just wanted to say that you guys are amazing. I missed the audience, uh, particularly when I was away, so you guys are super cool. Okay, waiting till they hush. All right, so this week for our events, we're focusing on the theme of hobbies. So everyone's usually got a hobby or they're looking for one, so this is a way for you to either pursue hobbies you already have, or maybe think about starting a new hobby and finding events that will cater to that. Um, especially in downtown Las Vegas. So it wouldn't be a hobby-themed um, event segment without mentioning SinShop. SinShop is our local hackerspace. And for those that don't right. know, a hackerspace is a basically a really cool space full of tools and, and a classroom and really cool stuff like laser cutters and 3D printers and soldering stations and routing machines and, and all And the this machines cool stuff. that make this thing, right? Yeah. So this is actually a gift that was in one of the previous episodes from the SinShop that mm -hmm. Susan and Pablo made originally. And you can see that it does some pretty cool tricks when you put AAA uh, batteries. Oh, push one again. more time. But uh, but yeah, you guys get a chance to build stuff like this. You get to go down with 3D printers uh, and there we go. There you go. Yeah, so see, <laughs> so we get the attention. So this was made in Cinchop, um, the Las Vegas hack space. Pablo and I didn't really know what we were doing. We just knew we wanted to make a sign. So um, that the hack space actually makes things like this happen. We got a lot of help, and it was heaps of fun. So if you wanted to kind of get a taster of what Cinchop has to offer, um, every single Monday night we have a special event going from 6 till 10 p.m. It's called <laughs> Do It Yourself World Domination Night with robots, and uh, it's all about having robotic themed night. So if you were thinking of making a robot, or if you're already working on one, you can yes. come. Down. <laughs> of course, I was thinking about making a robot. Right. That's what I think about all the time. And, uh, <laughs> yes. You might have found that I've snuck one into my suitcase from Robots Comp to bring along with me, which will be really fun. Um, you can come down and have a look at that. We're on um, North 4th Street, um, right opposite the Neonopolis, so super easy to find, and you can park at the Neonopolis for super cheap. Come down and hatch your latest gl um, global robotic invasion in the warm and hospitable company of other tech enthusiasts, is our tagline. Um, so if you want to just watch, then you can absolutely do that too. And we can give you a tour of Synchop at the same time. Um, so you can find us on synchop.org, or if you go to the meetup.com slash synchop, you'll be able to find the event there. Sounds cool. pretty awesome. Yeah, really excited. Next up is also uh, electronics based, um, which is really cool. It is SMT Manufacturing Night, and it's a tech talk on Tuesday, December the 17th at 6.30 p.m. Now, for those who don't know what SMT stands for, it sounds like a really scary um, abbreviation, but it just stands for Surface Mount Technology. So if you come along to this talk, it's being put on by Ryan Mulligan of Pololu Robotics and Electronics. Now, Pololu are uh, um, local, and they're like an electronics warehouse, so they, they have a shop front, and they, they they sell all sorts of really cool bits and bobs, and they also do a lot of community events. So this is another one that they're putting on. Bits and bobs, did you like that yeah, one? Yeah, well, I, 
and I was like, and I noticed that there's pizza at the end of this article. So there is. There a couple is. things made me smile, but yeah. So um, if you want us to know more about surface mount manufacturing, which is like those super professional circuit boards, the ones that are in your iPhone and all sorts of other things, you can come along and learn how printed circuit board assemblies are made, and also you know how surface mounted uh, components work. And as Dylan mentioned, if you RSVP, make sure that you do do that if you want free pizza because they're providing dinner as well, which is super cool. Yeah, that is going to be cool. So that's going to be heaps of fun, and I know that Ryan Mulligan is a, is a really knowledgeable dude, so you definitely want to get down for that. Right, and also this next event, we have T-Lit, which is one of the newest companies that moved to Las Vegas, and they reached Correct. out through us to the podcast early on, and they brought us tea. So it's cool. <laughs> they did. It's, yeah, really good tea, so I'm excited. And then I saw them at the Bitcoin conference, too, so they're one of the few companies that takes Bitcoin mm -hmm. for tea, and uh, yeah, what do they have going on? So I'm super, super excited that they just moved here because they're already integrating with our community. Um, from uh, 10 a.m. till 11 a.m. on December the 19th at Work in Progress. For those who don't know what Work in Progress is, it's this amazing co-working space um, on 6th Street where you can come and you sign up for a membership and you can co-work there. And there's some really kind of effervescent and vibrant people in there that, yeah. that, that like to co-work. So this event is going to be put on there. And the event I mentioned before this is also going to be held there, the uh, surface mount. But this will be tea tasting basics and introduction to tea with the tea lit folks. And that is at least in my uh, sorry, Michael Peterson, yeah, as yeah, you mentioned. Yeah. Are they here? No. Okay. Nope. So if you are into the five major types of tea, which is green, white, black, oolong, and is it pure? I don't know. Pure? We, we need it. That. That's why we, that's why I needed this them. This is why I was we like, need this class, because I'm more of a coffee oh, person. This is like those so. wine people. I don't know how to, I don't know how to keep up. So <laughs> listen to, to this, though. Like, if you think that wine is complex, have a listen to what you're going to be able to take away. You're going to leave this tasting session with the ability to identify growing regions around the world mm. when you taste your tea, which is super impressive. I tea, the regions, there's obviously going to be lots of tasting going on, and you also get to check out the awesome work, work in progress space. Cool. That sounds really awesome. Sounds like a good set of events. Mm -hmm. And that's all for this week. Thanks, yeah. guys. Thank you, guys. Okay, so our next guest is an angel investor, and he's the founder and managing partner at Venture Blue Capital. He is the co-founder of Boom Startups, a mentor-driven seed accelerator in Utah, and he is an angel investor that also loves ham radio exploration. So please put your hands together for Rob, the coming in NASA coons. <laughs> Good. That's pretty good. Yeah, I make that crackly sound. You'd, you'd That's be a good thing. ham radio yeah. operator, I can tell already. <laughs> All right, well, first off, thank you for coming out and yeah, talking to it. us in the podcast. Now, what's really cool about this, even though it's, I've done so many interviews before, but this is actually the first mentor that Tiggy Cake had. Yeah, Back in right. Utah, is the first one he reached out to us before we, we had our email online, before we had our email set up, and he couldn't get all of us, but then we caught up with you right yep. after, and this was way back in 2010 before we That's even right. knew it would become anything. So, um, first off, I want to just kind of catch up on some of the things that have really happened. So, I know that the world of raising money has changed quite a bit. You wanted to talk a little bit about kind of how this whole angel list syndication kind of deal works? Yeah, totally. I mean, you guys went through this when you started raising money, right, for Ticket Cake. And the traditional kind of method and approach, are, of course, is hit the angel groups, right? And uh, as an angel investor that's a member of a number of different angel groups, I mean, we really suck to go pitch at, right? I mean, it's hard, <laughs> no, right? Because, no. no, it's hard. It's totally hard. Because <laughs> what we do is we put you through this rigorous, right, coming and pitch us, and it takes a month later. We do more due diligence, and it goes, drags on for like 90 days, and then we tell you, yeah, we're not going to invest, right? So there's a big shift from that formal angel group, that process that, that you've historically had to go through. Um, and everything's really moving online right now. So I'm a big, big advocate of AngelList, right? We love AngelList and Naval and what the team has done there. And actually, we're doing most of our investments now online, finding companies online and, and doing those investments kind of direct. So that's good, I think, for the entrepreneurs because it gives everybody a new way to kind of raise capital in a much more efficient way. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and so totally. I was real surprised to hear that your portfolio was up to, you said, 150 companies or around yeah, there? Yeah, something like, like that, yeah. Right, so I mean, you yep. have a huge yep. amount of companies. In yep. fact, I, they count that as three times what the VTF is invested in. I know, I know yep. to some degree they're smaller investments, but what is this strategy that you're using with that kind of this ecosystem yeah, so, group so, investing? So so it's kind of the second order effect of investing because what we do is we actually invest in the initial companies because we love the founding team where it fits our thesis that we're investing in. But what we've really realized is after you get 20 or 30 companies in the portfolio, the second order effect is really where you can start teaming up 
multiple companies in your portfolio. So if maybe if you guys, Ticket Cake, had some issues with um, some social marketing or something and we have investments in other companies that have solution, we'd actually pair you guys up. So it works both good for you know both companies and it also works us works good for us as investors because you know we're getting that second order effect between the companies and we found it's 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 been amazing actually when we hook up multiple companies together so yeah that's pretty cool so cuz we have a lot of startup entrepreneurs yeah. a lot of people that raise money in our audience are kind of under that $500,000 okay. zone kind of a little bit on the the bottom end of it but if they wanted to um, if they were looking to raise money and they wanted to find out if they were a fit for the other companies in your portfolio how are you creating that are you just trying yeah. to manage that all yourself or yeah so we've actually just created a classic mail list right that actually all that goes out to all portfolio companies once a quarter. And what we found is a lot of the companies actually just find out about one another, right, through that process. And then, of course, we are getting status reports consistently, right, every month from the company. So we, what they report to us, primarily what we ask for is not really financials and how you're doing in progress. It's more what are your risk items, what are the big issues. So we get all oh, this so kind of input coming in. Yeah, better. that's right. Yeah, yeah. We just do a manual matching, and it, it, it's pretty effective, yeah. Okay. Well, so and so, yeah. still, what are the what are the main triggers? I mean, when do you realize that you want to invest in a company? What are you? What are the similarities between the companies? Yeah, they're, that's all over the place, right? Just, so honestly, I, I just did an investment a couple of days ago, and I, I I probably spent no more than probably thirty or forty minutes, like doing due diligence. And one of the reasons why that is, right? It's a pretty quick investment, right? This is a new trend: invest smaller bets online, very quick, very fast. Take those little bets and you just track the company and looking for their traction and their performance metrics. Once they start moving up, then you double down and do that second investment. But we've been able to do with kind of the portfolio of having you know more companies involved is actually they actually help us do the due diligence. So this this uh, latest investment we we made at Expresso, uh, kind of upcoming grad from 500 startups. Okay. They're gonna have their demo day in February, so we're trying to get in right pre demo day, right, get a little right, bit of yeah, valuation, yeah, yeah. right? We all know that's what about because we love kind of those lower valuations. <laughs> But what we did is due diligence was we looked at what they were doing. We invested in that company because there was three or four other portfolio companies that had issues that Ad Expresso basically solved. So we took those companies, right. paired them up, and said, "You go do it. Try it. You try tell it, yeah. me as a portfolio company, like, should we invest? Are, are they helping you solve the problem?" And they came back, all three of them said, "Right." This which is which perfect. is who you really want to listen to is somebody who's totally actually right trying to get the totally. problem solved yep. for them. Okay. Yep. Um, so you, I know you got a chance to to do office hours today, then a yeah. work in progress, yeah, and now you are opening up in Salt Lake City a place called the Hub, yeah. which is going to be a very similar co working space. Now, what did you like about the way work in progress was set up, and how are you going to focus on culture, kind of in that same way that work in progress is to like help everybody help each other? Yeah, I think one thing that we learned when we were kind of just walking through the space is how important kind of just space design is, right? And, and enough, and, and we originally, the, the model that we're building in Salt Lake was a much more open space. And I really like kind of walking through that space today and seeing how things were kind of nook and nannies to the right, right? There's offices there. Love that big, like, back warehouse right, area, right. the garage area. Like, the that was area. killer yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah. It was like, you go out there and have a party, right? And have people, a big gathering. So I think, you know, that that designing that space where it has really multiple use, multiple functions is really, really kind of important. So okay. yeah, I'm looking forward to that table? Oh, I would hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I would hope kind so. Of, what I kind of co-working so. space would Absolutely. be without it? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, so um, what else um, can you tell us about the investments that you've made that entrepreneurs should know if they're trying to raise money? Yeah, I think um, a lot of it is finding, getting that personal relationship with the uh, investor before you go pitch to them, right? There's many different ways, like uh, I do office hours all the time, so I have a great opportunity to have entrepreneurs build a relationship with me, and it's really about this trust relationship before we write that check. And and like ohours.org, I, I post up there all the time, so I'm usually online you know, every other week, essentially. But I think that's really the key thing, is to build that relationship. And I mean, we even did that when we first started mentoring, right? Have that casual advisor mentorship relationship, build yeah. that level of yeah, trust, right. right? And then it's so much easier for us to invest, and hopefully for the entrepreneur to feel comfortable with the investor as well. Yeah, it's interesting because you yeah you wanted yeah. to meet us at a place to drink beers, which yeah. in Utah is yeah. So yeah, so, yeah you, at least you, here we go. Here we you are. like Kathy. Here we are. Yeah. Cheers, man. Here right we all here. still just drinking this time around. Yeah, <laughs> haven't moved on at all. <laughs> Same thing. Okay, well, so, so so just to have fun, like one of the craziest things about you that we always joke about is that you yeah. love these ham radios, and you've talked to yeah. you've talked to the space station, right? Yeah, like I mean, you could right. call them up, and they're like, "Hey, Rob. Yeah, well, how's, not, how's Earth or we're not, whatever? We're not, we're not quite on a first name basis yet. But okay, yeah, being a ham radio." Operator, yeah, we talked to the, the <laughs> astronauts aboard the space station, and it's actually pretty fun because you would think that, you know, first of all, these guys don't have a lot of time up there, but it was amazing to me that this is actually an outlet. 
for them. Like they'll be coming over. We have a 12 minute thing when they go over the top of the horizon and they're asking like, you know, who's winning the football game or what's going oh. on. And they don't want to, they want to talk about like the fun stuff, right? So about going over yeah. there, right? Because they're, they're, they're flying yeah. in the same direction as the earth, right? So yeah. aren't they always stationary or are they, no, there's only 12 minutes no. when you can hit them with your 12 minutes. How do you point at them or what do you do? Well, so NASA, we get we get these things called uh, telemetry orbit elements that we download into a computer program, and we've got these antennas sitting on top of our roof, and that computer program tracks, right, the, the space station that goes across the sky. So we've got antenna systems that are moving across, oh, and then so cool. microphones, and just kind of talking to them, and yeah, it's it's pretty fun actually. It's uh, <laughs> it's weird to build a relationship with an astronaut, <laughs> and so one time the guy, this is pretty funny, the guy was coming across. To, uh, Doug, uh, Doug Wheelock, right? Okay. He's the commander of ISS 25, and he was coming across the horizon. I said, could you have someone grab a, grab a camera and take a picture? Because I'm going to do that at my end. I'd love to get a picture of both of us when we come back to Earth and <laughs> do them together. So we did a photo shoot, like this remote photo shoot. Like, you know, I'm orchestrating this. I like, call this guy. He's yeah. stopping the scientists, and the other astronauts come and take the picture. And he goes, he said, next time around, let's do a video. Yeah, so oh, he had another cool. astronaut shoot a video, and I did my own kind of little webcam. And we put it together, and two months later, I get a call from the Human Flight Space Center at NASA. Okay. And saying, they saw that, I put this video, you know, you can appreciate this, dubbing, and I got the video from the space station and from Earth, and we dubbed that together, and NASA said it's the first video of astronaut in space with a civilian on Earth, right, merged together. Right, because so, you, you had timestamps yeah, on it, I guess. So, so awesome. you're actually it was so like, awesome. Like, actually, back and forth. So when I'm talking to Mike, he's listening, and I've got my recording up there in the space station. And NASA said, we're going to fly you out to Ohio. The astronaut's going to be there. We want to meet you, you oh, two guys meet cool. in person. <laughs> so I actually got to meet the astronaut I was talking to all that time. So, yeah, it's yeah, just a fun little hobby. Yeah, give a round of applause to NASA. They just had that thing up. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for yeah, coming to visit. Um, yeah. yeah, everybody can check you out. I'm gonna normally we have the Twitter and the website, but I'm gonna yeah. give out the angel.co forward slash Rob Coons yeah. K U N Z. And you guys, uh, if you're looking to raise money or you just want to learn more about yeah, totally. um, how how this whole thing that he's talking about with Angelist works, go ahead and friend him and send him a message. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much for coming to visit. Cheers, us. We man. really appreciate, appreciate it. it. So, Good yeah. Yeah. Follow us, remember like a flashback. Vegas Tech, don't forget to spell it with the hashtag.